Let's go ahead and talk about pointers. I have seen that enough of people actually over explain pointers and that makes it really tough to understand for beginners that what is pointer, how to use them and why even they exist. We won't be doing that. Understanding the pointer is really simple. Please don't over complicate that and that's exactly what we'll be doing. I'll give you some of the hints and some of the explanation about the pointer so that you can understand that what is the reason why these pointers exist and regardless of what language you are going to work with, if there is a pointer concept in them, you are going to always be happy about the pointers, you'll understand them forever. Let's go ahead and create our exercise files first and then I'm going to explain a little bit on the pointers concept. So this is our 07 file, let's call this one as my pointers and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and create a new file into it, main.go. You might be getting this as a second next to nature now. Let's go ahead and open this up and regular stuff, go mod, initialize it with uh, saying my pointers or any other name that you're having. Okay, that's cool. Okay, let's go ahead and say that this is a package and we will have a function. Let's name this function as main. And just like always, we're gonna say fumpt.println and we're going to say welcome to a class on, too many S, <laughs> class on pointers. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, first let's understand why does this pointer exist? And it doesn't really matter if you're understanding the pointers in Go or any other language. Now there is a problem in the programming language and this is a problem which exists in all of the language. The problem is that sometimes you obviously know that whenever you declare any variable, any constant, any array, they are just a reference of the memory. These all values that you put inside these variables and these constant, they get stored in some memory. And the problem is that sometimes when you pass on these variables into a variety of functions or variety of classes and objects, sometimes there is a problem that these variables actually not get passed along. Sometimes a copy is being created of these variable and that copy is being passed on into these multiple of functions. And this sometimes create some of the irregularities in the program. So to avoid these irregularities, we have the pointers. Pointers give us the surety that whatever the resource you're passing on as a pointer, so instead of passing on these variables, I'm not passing these variables, I'm passing the memory address of these variable, so it makes a 100% guarantee that whatever you're passing on, it is always the actual value from the memory that is being passed on. So again, to summarize it onto a short, sometimes when you pass on these variables, a copy of these variable is being passed on. Whenever there is a case when you want to avoid such things to happen and you want absolute guarantee that always the actual value should be passed on, then we prefer that a pointer should be passed on. A pointer is nothing, it's just a direct reference to the memory address. And since you're directly passing on that address, it makes 100% guarantee that the actual value is being passed on. Yeah, surely there are probably hundreds of other definitions, but this is the real world use case. And this is why exactly the pointers were designed and are being still utilized in majority of the programs. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so we know how to create a variable. Let's see that now we want to see that how we can create these pointers and they are really, really simple. We know that if we want to create any uh, value, so let's just say I call one as my variable, I go ahead and put it up like two. So this is how I create a uh, a simple uh, value up here. And of course, I will say that this is of type integer. Of course, it's not being used, that's why the right, red squiggly line. So we have already seen these kinds of stuff. And we have also seen that sometimes we just create stuff like this, that hey, I'm creating a variable, and this variable is of type integer, but I'm not putting any value, I'm not initializing any value. So similar to this, you can go ahead and create a pointer, feel free to name it PTR, pointer, my pointer, whatever you want to say. But instead of saying integer, we go ahead and put an asterisk on that. And this asterisk is a symbol that this data type is of pointer. A pointer which is going to be responsible for holding integers into that. So yeah, a couple of stuff goes on. This, this asterisk or this uh, multiplication sign is saying that I'm a pointer, but what kind of value I'll be storing is integer. So again, no problem. If you want to have a string type, yeah, that's totally allowed. We're gonna go work with the integer up here. Okay, so this is the part one of it. There is another keyword or another symbol that will also float around whenever we are going to talk about the pointers, which is an ampersand sign. And I'll tell you what that is in a minute. But first of all, this is all. This is all what we got. Now let's go ahead and see uh, a couple of more resources. First, let's go ahead and print out this so that we know what this is actually or what is the default value of it. 
So let's go ahead and say that value of value of pointer is and uh, let's go ahead and just put up a comma and PTR of course not a dot a comma if I can put that <laughs> there we go okay let's go ahead and print this out and see what actually the value is so I'm gonna go ahead and say go run main.co okay come on run this and notice here it says a nil so if you start a pointer you don't put any value to it its value is actually nil okay very very interesting now I'm gonna go ahead and of course I don't want to open that let's go back and I don't want to delete this so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these tools and put a control slash or command slash so that it's commented out now let's go ahead and explore a little bit more now you know how to declare a pointer and see that the default value is nil let's go ahead and utilize that so I'm gonna go ahead and say that I want to create a my number which is a variable I directly want to add a value of 23 and it's going to automatically infer that it is a type of integer okay nice and easy now again I want to create a pointer previously I created a pointer which was pointing to nothing no memory address but now I want to create a pointer which points to this memory address obviously my number is a variable but this is actually something which is storing 23 in the memory so I want to get that memory address so how do we create a variable which points to something which was already declared okay we can name it anything whatever you like no problem at all and that is where this ampersand sign uh, kicks in and I'm gonna go ahead and say my number now notice here the difference previously I used a trick to create a pointer now I'm using an ampersand to create a pointer but very interestingly previously I just created a pointer here I'm not creating a pointer I'm just creating a pointer which is also referencing to some some memory so whenever there is a talk about referencing that's where you use ampersand or you can just note it down somewhere in your notepad uh, reference means ampersand that's all pretty much it okay really really simple let's go ahead and now uh, try to print print out some of the values so we're gonna go ahead and say we are going to say that value of actual pointer is and uh, let's go ahead and put up a comma and now I want to have a couple of values to be printed out let's go ahead and duplicate this one now interestingly let's go ahead and print out the value of the pointer just like this and what happens I want to see that what happens if I go ahead and put out the value of actual pointer remember whenever you want to reference any pointer uh, there are a couple of things very interesting you need to know and that will be much more clear uh, after we run this line of code so let's go ahead and run this one let's go ahead and say go run main.go in the first line we actually get 0xc00 which is an actual memory address but in the second line we get the value 23 so I told you that pointer is a reference to the direct memory location and that's what it is but the value inside this pointer is actually 23 how come that is true because when you say asterisk pointer that means hey I want to see what's inside that pointer what's inside that pointer how I was able to fill that I was able to fill that by providing a reference to this one I know this is a little bit too much but don't you worry too much on that part this is really the simplest example on the pointer as we move ahead later on in the subject like mutex and stuff you are going to realize that yeah pointers are actually serious and they are super useful in the case when you pass along stuff too into too many of these functions okay uh, now a couple of interesting more stuff about the pointers uh, just last thing I promise on to that okay what we're gonna do we now do that when I say asterisk PTR that means it's not memory address it's actually the value inside it which is 23 in my case so if I go ahead and say that hey take that existing pointer and we are going to just go ahead and multiply it by 2 or any other operation that you want to perform now if I go ahead and try to just have a value and I say new value is and like that and I just go ahead and try to say my number now just take a moment and realize this this is the most important operation my number value was 23 and now why the pointer reference I'm saying hey whatever the value you exist in my pointer I just want to multiply it by 2 if you are able to answer this then probably half of your doubt about the pointers are uh, actually gone to make the operation a little bit easier uh, because not all of us are math friendly let's go ahead and do that so can you guess what would be the actual value inside this 
If you can guess that, that means you are all done. Let me show you what the result is, and I'm pretty sure most of you have guessed it right. So the new value is 25. So pointer, as I said, makes it a guarantee that no matter what you're doing the operation with those values, those operations are actually performed on the value, not on the copies of those values. Right now it seems pretty easy, but when you introduce the couple of functions and stuff, sometimes the guarantee is not that much easy to take. Okay, so that's it, a long class on the pointer. I do agree, it is a little bit of a difficult concept, but always understand the meat part of it. It gives you the guarantee that the operation will be performed on the actual values. Let's catch up in the next video. Thank you.